and that you seek to correct the mistakes where the trustees have erred. And you offer them a way out as mistakes. I mean, the, the concept of mistake is that, you know, people trespass or, 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 or do things without realising what they've done, yeah? And that way you can render the record and correct the record. And that's something that the general executor has the time travel power to do in their system for those reasons I just mentioned. All right? That has nothing to do with the doctrine of necessity and duress, though, by not attending. Nothing to do. Attend. Totally different. Yeah, okay. Totally yes. different. Um, the doctrine of, 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 uh, of uh, necessity is survival. Um, when one is right. under attack, when one is surviving, when one isn't right. even near the position of uh, coming out as general executor, then right. the doctrine of necessity says, I sign things VC, I do not consent. Yeah, totally different, totally different. Right, okay. So this is still going to be, I mean, this, you have to be definitely be ready for this, competent, and it's, it does take You time. have to be completely ready. And if anyone thinks that they can just slide in, I know you're not saying this, but I'm just saying for the benefit of the call, that's okay, is if anyone thinks that, uh, oh, well, this general executive sounds great, you know, take it out for a spin, unless you have read all the canons, unless you know who you are, unless you have proven that you have the self-discipline to behave honourably and respectfully, I mean, unless you are willing to do the hard yards, and it's hard, to live from this point on, never to be part of the problem, but to be part of the solution. You're not ready. You're not ready to be a general executive. As much as being a general executive may be the answer to your prayers, you're not ready. And I think this is going to be one of the biggest challenges for people with this knowledge. Is it, it, It's not there for young players just to go, ha ha, here I go, I'll fix up this, this, this and this. It's not. Uh, it's, it's to those... To be really honest, it's to those that have been who have suffered, who have learned, who have who who possibly have, have had all manner of things done to them, to see that uh, you know there is justice in the universe, and that it's time for them to step up and and to become what they absolutely deserve to be, and that is to be the general executor to right the wrongs. Mm -hmm. See, my biggest fear here, because there's children involved, is I. I don't want the, a situation where I come in and, and try to do something and piss the judge off, and he takes the kids from both of us I, I, in that out of retaliation type of thing. And that's well, I, I think don't. this is this is why I think you need to to spend more time in understanding the implications. I think of of what the role means. Yeah. Uh, and 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 to tread warily. The the fear is not unfounded, nor yeah. nor is uh, treading warily an unsound doctrine. But when you're ready, you act. And that's I'm coming being closer and closer. I'm closer. Yeah, good. Thank you very much. Good on you. Thanks, Frank. All right. Good question. Thank you, Frank, and thank you, Alpha. All right. Let's go. Uh, let me cover this one question here. It's kind of jumping out at me right now uh, from a little bit earlier. Um, S22 asks, uh, where is the guarantee that a record will be made in the absence of beneficiaries outside of the church slash state, presuming that role? Well, uh, I'm going to have to find that. Just can you repeat that for me, just so I've got it clear, and I'll listen again. Where is the guarantee that a record will be made in the absence of beneficiaries outside of the church state, presuming that role? Ah, I can see it now. Um, yeah, it's it's <laughs> the reason I asked you to reread it because it's it's it, I'm uncertain exactly what what the underlying um, presumption of the question is or what the question is seeking to identify. But if I can just break down a couple of things quickly on it. Um, I'm wondering if it has to do with recognition of the record or register being made. 
Well, the, the church, the church has given itself the ability to to maintain what they call a secret register, right? And that's built within the canon law of the Roman cult and uh, its various groups. And of course, we have the public record in terms of our statistics. Um, I'm I'm not quite sure. You see, guarantee. Yeah, it's it's a difficult question, guest twenty two, because I'm not. My trouble here is to understand what you're trying to get at. Um, you know, the guarantee of a record um, will be made in the absence of beneficiaries outside of the church presuming that role. It's, it's a question that doesn't really give me an understanding of what you're asking. I mean, it's built in presumptions there. Absence of beneficiaries. Uh, church state presuming beneficiaries. It's not... I'm sorry, guest 22, but I'm going to have to ask you to retype it and requalify it because I can't really get into the meat of it. It doesn't really follow. I don't really know what you're asking. Okay? Yeah, I I, I agree. I think that would be help, helpful to qualify it a little bit more. Let's go back to the phones and Ron. Hello, Ron. Hi, Terry. Hi, Frank. Hi. Hi, Ron. Two things. Uh, the question that came up about the soul code, uh, in my own experience, I really enjoyed the D-Day Magisterium. Uh, that is a excellent primer on um, the soul code and how everything came about. And that person can find that on oneevil.org. Now, question number, well, actually, it's a question comment number two. Um, you know, I've been fighting the IRS for quite some time. They took my home and all that stuff, right? So yeah. today, I get in the mail five or six notices from the same years that they had just stole my property to pay for, right? Yep. Yep. And they just said that um, they audited the 1040A and found there were discrepancies. Well, so what? Anyway, what I want to do is a rejection notice, and I'm just seeking some ideas what I should put on the rejection notice. That's all. Okay. Um, we haven't spoken about tax for a while, and tax in its own case is, a, as you know, is a, is a minefield. But, but there are a number of, it appears to be that there are a number of, of fundamental presumptions that tax operate on that if you jump on, the machine keeps processing. Right. The, the first is that they presume you, and you've heard this not just from me, but you've heard it from many other people, and, and it's you know it's been around for a lot longer than we have discussed it. First and foremost, they presume you to be an employee. And a Secondly, tax, hmm? and a taxpayer. A taxpayer is extremely important. Yep. Because the taxpayer uh, to them effectively means that you. Uh, declaring, we spoke about this, that you are declaring that you have committed an offence. And this is an important aspect of tax. This is why, you know, you talk to anyone in a Western country today and they say, but the tax department treats me like I'm a criminal. Well, that's... And, and this is people who actually uh, have, have no... Um, haven't gone through anything like you've gone through, Ron. That, that actually is a very true statement because, in fact, by being a registered taxpayer, you are declaring by being a registered taxpayer that you will be committing certain offences over a year that is aggregated into a trust. Right. And then what they expect you to do is to confess, yeah, as to your crimes over that year and to self-assess your penalty, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, they criminalise the tax system in order to make tax collection, collection efficient. 
and presumably because whoever owns the, the, the tax system wanted to make more money. But they criminalised it because they'd already done the legwork on converting us into enemy enemies of the state, yeah? Right. Enemies to commerce. So by being a registered taxpayer, that means that you are declaring yourself uh, a criminal by... Um, by uh, also being there, you're assumed to be an employee, and uh, you are also presumed to have engaged in some kind of commercial agreement with them. Now, the rejection notice needs to eliminate those presumptions. Right. The problem with tax is the tax system is like the unholy um, fantasia, you know, the, the Wizard's Apprentice, Mickey Mouse, it's going to keep going until you clear up these bigger macro issues, yeah? Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is year after year, the tax is going to come back and say, where's this for this year? Where's this for this year? And it's going to keep going on and on and on like a great automated system. Unfortunately, in America, the problem you face, as in many places, is Ron, I would suggest that the vast majority of these notices is all done through computer. There wouldn't oh, be a single human being that has looked over this. The computer systems have come out and done it. Yeah? Yep. So, so um, you're uh, right. I'll, I'll, I'll oh. talk to you about rejection notices on a separate call to this one. Yeah? Okay. Give me a call when you can. All right. Bye now. Bye. Bye, Ron. All right, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, but it may require some some different uh, approaches and some different thoughts into uh, coming together on that one, which would be helpful to a lot of folks, Frank, if, uh, regarding those issues. Yeah, I think, look, I'll, I'll make it a priority next week that we cover the issue of um, how to deal with um, demands of tax yeah. And uh, it's it's not just simply sending uh, a rejection notice. It's putting yourself into the position of being, if you if if it's a demand notice for a company, then um, you know you are the occupant of the office of the general executive of that company. It's a private company possessing its own constitution and policies. You have got the full authority granted by the equity holders, exclusively for setting policy and no other. So anyone sends a demand notice for, for you to act, they are making presumption that they can tell you what to do. And then you go through and say, you know, negative environment. Show me um, the letterhead document where you've granted the IRS the power of executor over you. Show you the bona fide signed sealed contracts for each and every year for the separate accounting periods in question between a, an authority with some specific reference to each contract and the valuable consideration provided um, and the schedule of fees for penalty rates. And, and the third, give, give me an extract of the regular payroll record showing payments um, as, a, as an employee and then add your schedule of fees. So we'll, we'll talk about that next week because I know this is an issue that people are under attack all the time. All right? Yes, very good. Thank you, Frank. All right, next question from the chat. Is the EDP pronuncio process on hold or are we to continue serving the national government? I, I would ask people to put it on hold, but keep in mind that nothing that has been done and nothing that anyone has done in pursuing that puts anyone in a position of um, jeopardy, nor has anything that we have uncovered invalidated the process. Instead, what we've recognised is a system that is so obsessed in playing games that unless the name of the document is called, in this case, a will and testament, they will not recognise it. So we're asking people to put any process that they've been following on hold until we can update the material. All right, thank you for clearing that up. Uh, I'm sure that helps several folks here. All right, now, next question from the chat. Again, those of you on the phone lines, if you have a question you'd like to call in, just press uh, star 
8 on your phone, and that will put you in the question queue. All right, next question from the chat. 